Peter actually filming his lunch. There's my cousin Tam over there, good actor, whoever loves him, what a spec. And Vicky Jarrett's over here somewhere, I can see her now, hold on. Yeah, she's over there, but you can only see the very top of her But the luminaries, I'm sure, will come in fast. Oh, that's so much better. You can see the crowd is thoroughly cosmopolitan, as Peter's pointing out. Pretty theatre too, to have such filth in it. Rolling with like a bunch of hips guys. Yeah, the hips guys are pretty I might even be able to name some of them. That's Handsome Bob with the long hair. Hello! Are you doing alright with this one? Brilliant. Yeah, sorry about that, Jack. That was a technical hitch there. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying that um, you know the books just seem to uh, you know once you've done a book and you've finished it, you forget about it until it, if it gets made into a stage play or a screenplay again, and uh, then you, you kind of uh, you have to go back to it. But uh, you don't like to look at them again because all you see is the mistakes and the crap sentences and all that. And you think, Fuck that, man. I love it. <laughs> You got that big buzz when the book came out last week then, headshots. It was brilliant. It's like one of the good things about doing these kind of things is that uh, you can actually kind of, you meet people in the signing queues and all that, you talk to people and you see, you get some kind of sense that, that, that uh, people actually enjoy this or, you know, they're interested in it. And you don't really get that in a book because it's, it's such a lonely thing, you know, you write the book and you send it in your editor and they talk, they, you talk it through with them and all that. And, uh, as opposed to like if you do a film, there's so many people involved. Yeah, so Taxi, this is some kind of lamenting on um, the taxi driver's law. 
basically. You know, so all he wants to do is deal his drugs and uh, find women to indulge in pornography with the homemade gods of porn with them. So uh, here he goes. I'm sniffing about them. I'm sniffing about for minge on the bridges. There's no blood flagging me down. So I just picks up another fair head, a stiff back cunt and a tin flute carrying a briefie. If anything, it's a tip in this fucker. <laughs> so I'm thinking about lassies, and two in particular, Suzanne Prince and Yvette Bryson. The two I fired into bareback that weekend nearly ten years ago when I was on a downer after the third divorce. <laughs> As a result, I've got two wee bastards out of the deal. <laughs> I'm all for William and the ginger bastard keeping their man's surnames. Feminism, but eh? Why did you? See if I'd have been up to me. I'd have had that fucking tube up, baked their snatches, and I'd been sucking like a double team and called no birthday. So I'd have the carrot, and then slap, baked the bloody bastards into the lappy pan. <laughs> But they wanted to keep them, but eh, so no complaints here, just as long as the name's Lawson's kept off the certificates. <laughs> so it's fucking true. <laughs> so I double back doing pretty, and I'm heading up the mountain. Cut in the back's got a fucking coupon on him. So I better start gapping if I want to sniff out a tip here. <laughs> so what's it you do here? Sell me. Madison. <coughs> a doctor, eh? Of sorts. I'm a specialist. The cunt goes looking outside. Why are we going this way? Trams one way system rerouted, cancel. So, what do you specialise in? See me, I specialise in love. Mind of that song, I specialise in love, Sharon Brown. Mind of that, you're not. I don't think so. Blood out a fucking stain with some cunts. What's it you specialise in then, mate? Gynecology. <laughs> Guy in there fucking your fun and through a red light! You the back to the boy! He snaps forward in the seat, just as well he belted off with a poor cut that had been squished through the fucking judicial that had been sitting in strips on my lap. <laughs> Sorry mate, I was just thinking you'd probably see more fannies than me. <laughs> you don't want an assistant, are you? <laughs> The guy pushes himself back in the seat. And I really don't think. Tell you what, mate, I came away in the bar's funny, I tell you that. <laughs> Maybe I've not got any technical terms like you, but I came when you push this button. Bang! This happened. Fill that hole. Wham! You have cunt you. <laughs> as a lawyer tries to cut us off as we rumbled into towards Cameron Toll. Thank you. I'll bear that sterling advice in mind. The boy says, and then the Moby goes off. No unusual about that, but the name, the Poof, comes up on caller ID. I know it, but I'd better get into that cunt sauna soon and take a wee check. <laughs> this is an infirmary, if you just pull up in here. A voice for the back. Sound. Gonna look at some of the fannies in me. <laughs> Something like that. It's a tough shift, but some kind's got to do it. Can't be thinking. I think you'll get to look at all the parties in the back of this car. Usually they're the kind you want, but not me, eh? I suppose not. Uh, well, thank you. Tell us one thing, mate. So you going back to the technical side, like? Can of Eskimos have got a thousand words for snore? You boys, gynecologists, have you got the same for fannies? <laughs> Bet you saw, eh? I goes, doing the old trick. He no opening the doors until the wallet comes out, and above all, keep fucking talking. As a result, the cunt pays me way too much. A fuck about that would never have tipped if it was a sewer face cunt. <laughs> that mumpy cunt, do he, my mate, he ain't his bones on about the tips. It's because you're a sewer face fucker. <laughs> but this boy's coughed up though, and he seems tickled. Eskimos, snow. I'll have to remember that one. <laughs> Thank you for listening, folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
your, your role in the Scotland nowadays is starting to not just as a writer. Okay? I mean, of course, it's Panel Wood on the wall has to say, hi, Panel Wood, <laughs> me, Johnny Mackay for Penny Cook, hi, me and my brother Hank are going around to see my cousin Mulkey, just walking through the doors like we're all on tour. I tell we Jimmy, if, if I said to me Jimmy, we're going there, she would go, you're fair going up in the world, Johnny. Do you want to speak to the like to ask? <laughs> but I did speak to my wee Jenny. Oh, I went. She's got to speak to me first. I she does. But I'm not thinking about that because I'm all excited and happy, even though Hank's not looking that chuffed. They'll be thinking we're too good for the coot now, Hank. I was. Because they will that, eh? If they saw us like. Now we're all with Penny Coot, Johnny. Hank goes. People forget that. People like Malky. Then you become one of them. It's nice of them to ask us, but Hank, nice of us, huh? Aye, I suppose so. Hank's looking at me that way, like in the eyes, like you did when we were younger. As long as he doesn't start lording it over us, he forgets we're just as good as him. Just as good, Hank, aye, just as good, we are that, aye, 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 I was. And we get to the door, there's an awfully nice smile for a fairly in a maroon jacket, like a steward. I'd like a maroon jacket like that to dress up in. It would be a marriage robe just to take people in the hospitality on the match day. But what if somebody that I can't want to get in but wasn't on the list? I'd have to turn them away because that would be my job. But I wouldn't have the hair to do that. No, sir, I would not. No. But so maybe it isn't a job for me because I like painting the Raymond, you know, the Skittles. <laughs> so, when I get up to the fellow in the maroon jacket, he goes, Welcome to Tyne Castle Hospitality. And he lets us in, because we give him the names. Aye, our names on the list. Nice smile for the doorman behind. I goes as we walks into the room, and all they was are wood panelled, just like the folks say they would be. <laughs> nice to be nice. Wood panelled was, Hank. <laughs> Too Americanised, Hank goes. He didn't want all that funny shite in Scottish football. But what is an American word, Hank, so maybe you're getting all Americanised yourself, but, eh? Who are you there, eh? Eyes up, eyes up, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Hank's no here in his back because he's looking at Malky who's got a drink in his hand talking to some people. Aye, and Hank's got a kind of bad hair face on. He thinks running a fucking minicab for a mix of pig noise. Well, isn't he a fucking pig noise to me? I was. I can see what Hank means, but having a fleet of cabs is better than driving a forklift truck or painting skittles in a house. Is that any doubts? Aye. Grand. Aye, so this I was to Hank. Looking about. There's white tablecloths and there's bellies and suits. So I goes up to the pan old wood and starts smelling it for the polish on it again. <laughs> I feel Hank's hand on my shoulder. Stop sniffing wood, Johnny! <laughs> Just for the smell of the Polish bit, Hank. What have I tell you about sniffing wind? You're showing us up. Hank goes. And there's this other steward boy. And we let some see the passes, Hank's go. The steward nods and Malky's there, talking to the two boys in suits, but fair play. He comes over and to welcome us, all right? It's my cuz, Hank, and my cuz, Jonty. It's nice here, aye. Nice it is, so it is, aye. Aye, aye, because it is. It is. It's nice. <laughs> There's wood paneling and cream moss. Above the wood paneling, like magnolia, that's what they call that kind of paint. <laughs> I can't know about that, there I know, I tell them. This is a lie. Malky nods over to a guy in a nice blue suit. Keith Fuller. He sort of whispers. He made it big time in double glazing back in the 80s. You see what he did? We invested into personal insurance, medical stuff and all that. Made a mint. I'm thinking about this because that Vladimir, the Lithuanian fellow from Russia, he's not meant to be helping the club name here. So, who does uh, the insurance boy not come in and help the club for? Malky goes to speak, but then he sort of can he? Aye, Johnny's got you there, I goes. He's got that much money, what does he not come in and help the club for? Malky shakes his head. Need to go rich for putting money into a football club, and quite a few go poor, he says. Let's just say that Keith is part of a wee consortium in which I expect to hold a small interest who are watching developments closely. And he taps the side of his nose. 
shite. <laughs> and Malky here is a bit sorts the kid on Disney. Then they start having a they start having a blather about Hertz's chances today. See if it was me that was Paulo Sergio, I'd tell him to give the ball to Ryan Stevenson. That's what I'd say. Just one thing. Give the ball to Ryan Stevenson. Hi sir, Ryan Stevenson. <laughs> then the wee boy, then this big tall boy comes over. Looks off a posh pan low face, my man would say. Malky introduces the pan looking boy to us, my good friend Donald Melrose QC. The pan looking boy with the funny letters after his name say, Malcolm, how are you? I'm just telling my cousins Hank and John, Johnny I goes, Johnny! The Malky looks a wee bit pushed off with us, but I've already been kind of Johnny for way back in Pennycook and you should kind of eye, should I, son? John T, the boy goes. Then he looks at Hank and nods. He smiles and turns to Malky. This fabled consortium of Scotland publications, which may or may not exist, and assuming it was said to do so, and I indeed was a member, though, as you know, no such verifying document proves the existence or otherwise of the undernoted so called consortium. <laughs> I'm trying to follow the posh by Pan Lopi Donald, but I can't kind of hear him, right? So, and the boy smiles at us again. It could very well be a figment of the imagination of some of the more obtuse members of our local fourth estate. It comes to Malky. No, member, no minutes of meetings, no documentations, no emails between prominent members of the business community and high-ranking city officials and councillors can be evidence to exist. The boy's going on, and you can that he'd be a, a good as a lawyer because they can't even understand what he was saying. <laughs> Don't tell you were in the jail. Then he would understand, all right? <laughs>
Did you see? Did you see Dale and George and that? What did they say and all that? So they just left two doors away for you. They won't see them until I come back. You know. So there's there's degrees of engagement as well. I think. Like, you know. Um, but and it does take the burden out of exile. You don't experience exile the same way because of all the, the social media. All right. How's it going, Mikey? Hey, okay. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> I'm just showing Peter get his book signed, it's quite, quite amusing. There he goes, yeah. More, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael getting his book signed as well. Check that I don't know.